Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Brett Allen Smith here with IOTV's Morning Briefing. President Trump's top national security advisor John Bolton arrived in Israel yesterday afternoon for talks with Prime Minister Netanyahu. And at the very top of the agenda is a frank talk on the Iranian threat entrenched throughout Syria, a threat both nations want to see quickly resolved. This is Bolton's first visit to the region in his capacity as U.S. President Donald Trump's leading security advisor. Bolton replaced H.S. McMaster following a stormy exit back in April. But most agree that McMaster got the boot specifically because he disagreed with Trump on a number of key Middle East strategy points, including America's participation in the JCPOA Iran nuclear deal. Unlike McMaster, Bolton was far more in favor of withdrawing from that deal, making him a prime candidate for the role of national security advisor. Many months after pulling out of the JCPOA, Bolton's mission in Israel remains the same, to keep nuclear weapons from ever getting into Iranian hands. Today's ongoing talks with Netanyahu will cover Israeli security interests in the region. Bolton then takes these concerns to Moscow to follow up with Russian officials after last month's Helsinki summit between Trump and Putin. Russia is the third key player here in Syrian affairs. Russia recently agreed to pull back Iranian forces some 85 kilometers from the Israeli border. Israel remains adamant, however, that there should be zero Iranian troops in Syria at all. But with tens of thousands of Iranian forces scattered throughout the region, that scenario will be an uphill fight, especially given Russian insistence that Iran's troops are helping Russia and Syria fight the Islamic State. But Bolton's presence in Israel is, at the very least, a symbolic reminder of the intense American-Israeli relationship between these two administrations. Roughly six weeks ago, the King of Jordan made a trip to the White House for a one-on-one -on -one talk with U.S. President Donald Trump. A new account of the details of that meeting have just emerged with some surprising comments concerning Trump's thoughts on Israeli-Palestinian peace. In an apparent effort to get Jordan on board with his incoming peace deal, Trump allegedly told King Abdullah that without a deal, Israel may see a future prime minister named Mohammed in the coming years. Now, the sources who quoted Trump on this say that these words were offered as kind of a sarcastic half joke, but still, they do carry some degree of truth to them. King Abdullah was apparently telling Trump that many Palestinians no longer favored a two-state solution, instead preferring a one-state solution living alongside Israel with equal laws. This presents something of a dilemma for a country hoping to define itself exclusively as a Jewish state. With the number of Arabs and Jews between the seas almost equal, a one-state solution would likely make Jews a minority in the country. And this is precisely what Trump alluded to when he made his comments concerning a potential prime minister named Mohammed. It may be worth noting here that these talks happened mere weeks before the Israeli government voted on its much-debate nation-state bill and passed it into law. That law essentially rewrote the state's de facto constitutional basic laws by infusing the Jewish identity of the nation, but critics say that it also sets a massive legal precedent for nationwide apartheid and state-sponsored discrimination of all non-Jewish minorities in the country. Those minorities continue to protest the law both in the streets and in court to this very day. Trump's words those weeks ago capture many brutal truths and honest fears on all sides of the political spectrum. An IDF patrol unit near the Gaza Strip awoke to a very brutal wake-up call this morning, gunfire from a Palestinian gunman. At this time, no IDF injuries have been reported, which is very lucky, concerning that these shots came at a very close range, less than 60 feet from the security fence. Army sources have confirmed that the soldiers quickly returned fire after coming under attack. The Palestinian gunman is said to have been killed in that counterattack, though no word on his identity for now or whether or not he was directly affiliated with any known terror groups. This incident is merely the latest flash of violence along the Gaza border. It also comes at a time when Hamas and Israel are reportedly to be deep in negotiations for a one-year ceasefire deal. Such a deal would reportedly ease the blockade of the Gaza Strip as well as a trade route from Gaza to Cyprus in exchange for Hamas ending its violence against Israel for a year. But for now, skepticism is high on both sides of whether or not this deal can, or perhaps even should, come together. Israeli leaders just rolled out the red carpet for the inauguration of Ariel University's new medical school. The school's patrons, Sheldon and Miriam Adelson, were there to receive the warm words of President Wilvin Rivlin and Education Minister Naftali Bennett. The new med school will welcome its first class of 70 future doctors this coming fall semester. Now, erecting a university from scratch is definitely no small feat but Ariel University is a bird of an entirely different color. Located behind the green line in the West Bank, the Israeli University's mere existence is a much debated subject to begin with. 
Many Israeli institutions don't even officially recognize Ariel U for this very reason. While the university does technically offer classes to Palestinians, there are no Palestinians enrolled among its 15,000 current students. Any Palestinian attendees would almost certainly face severe repercussions at home for attending an Israeli institute that they feel is built on their own land. Regardless, Israeli Minister Naftali Bennett hailed the expansion of the university, as well as its founders, for overcoming an uphill battle. The Adelsons plan to invest another $20 million into Ariel U for a five-year expansion project. That's all for now. Follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and on Twitter at Al TV News. I'm Brett Allen Smith, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.